in, in our human psyche that we could actually do that. And I think it's very important to remember that that spirit has never been extinguished. Will never be. Now I just want to uh, tell you a, a couple of things that I went through myself. The camp was very crowded and as usual we used to go once a month to the, they used to have a place of de -lysing. So where they got rid of the lice because the, 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 the barracks were full of lice and vermin and people and, and I can't remember exactly where it came from. There was also a plush of transport came to us, but some some transport that came to Skarjisko because they used to replenish the people that died by bringing new people in. Uh, they brought typhoid with them. And the typhoid became very rampant and it was called fleck fever. It was a type of typhoid that you came out in spots. And you and and and, and this illness, you either got better after three days, because the third day after you kind of, you really had this high fever, the third day was your crisis, and if you got over the crisis, the chances were that you were slowly going to recover. And many people died, so they brought new people, and I got typhoid. We had also a hospital. They always had the revere, oh. they used to call it the <coughs> hospital. But the hospital was the anteroom of death. Because uh, if you went to hospital, there was not there were Jewish doctors there, and they were also amongst the prominent people, they were well fed, look, well looked after, because they didn't only look after the ill people in the camp or supposed to look after them, but they looked after the Ukrainian guards, families and the SS and so forth and so on. And some of them were really very famous uh, Jewish doctors and very good ones. So the, 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 the authorities kept them in kind of very nicely because they looked after, uh, after them. They tried very hard to cure you, but they didn't get any proper medication. They used to barter with the Ukrainian guards somewhere people must have had some jewels or something and they would bring aspirin and maybe a few other things so if you got if you went to the to the hospital as a sick person and you got better within a day or two or three the chances were you were okay but if not and you didn't know when whether it was a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday a truck would come along with Ukrainian guards and they would take the whole hospital take them to the Shtelnitsa where I work the high and into the forest and they would shoot them and that place in Skarzysko which was a Shilnitsa was not only a place of execution of the Jews of Skarzysko it was also a place where during the night they used to bring Polish partisans Polish political prisoners Russian prisoners people that they wanted to murder and they would murder them and and dig the in ditches that were prepared already before and buried them in those ditches. And sometimes they used to actually uh, burn the corpses. They used to have prisoners, not from not from our camp, but from they brought from somewhere and they used to actually burn the cor corpses. And, and so we actually would actually smell the, the burning of the corpses in that place. So you didn't go to hospital, you, 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 you didn't dare go to hospital. But you couldn't stay in the barrack if you couldn't go to work because after everybody left for work, there was day night, day, day duty and night duty because we were we worked 24 hours a day. Those factories never stopped working. So the day barracks had to be empty, the night barracks everybody was obviously sleeping. So in the day barracks, the Jewish police and the Ukrainian or German guard would come along and would check out if everybody had gone to work. If you didn't go to work and if you were, if they found you were ill, they would take you to the Riviera, to the hospital. And that was a place where you didn't want to go. Now, while I was ill with typhoid, I used to go to work for the first couple of days because I knew that I had to. And my, my friends, they would kind of hold me and we would march to the place where we went to work and then while I was at work they would cover up for me and I would be either sitting somewhere and if the guard would come I would be standing next to the bench and so forth so on. So the first couple of days. The third day when I was having my crisis 
I couldn't move. And I didn't want to go to the hospital. So it was decided amongst friends of mine that they would put me on the third upper bunk and cover me with straw and whatever happens happens because I just I couldn't move and I didn't want to go to the hospital because you know in the hospital the next day or the same day the truck would come along and I would be it would be the end of me so the first medical happened I was lying there shivering with fever waiting and the door opens a Jewish policeman comes in, goes to every bunk, stands on the first bunk so he can see on the, what's going on on the upper bunk, goes slowly to all the bunks, and then comes to the bunk where I am, stands up on it, looks at me, looks into my eyes, looks into my eyes for an eternity, and by that time, I think it was, must have been a German because he shouted in German, or maybe the Ukrainians also knew some German, and he shouted, Keine da! Nobody's here. And he walked out. Now he risked his life, because if he was found that he actually, you know, tried to save somebody in the barrack, they would, first of all, he said he wouldn't be a policeman anymore. He would lose all his privileges. That would be at, at, at the best. Or he would also be punished very badly. So the, first, so the first time that I actually, this is the first medical where I, well, it was the second medical, because the first medical I'll tell you some other time in my Dani. And the next day, I was strong enough to go to work. One of the things that the Nazi authorities were very good at, and this was part of the humiliation, whenever they had any kind of bad edict or anything that they wanted to do to the Jewish community in the camp or in the ghettos, wherever, they would choose a Jewish holiday. Yom Kippur, Tisha B'Av, which is the commemoration of the destruction of both temples in Jerusalem, the ninth day of Av in the Jewish calendar. They knew exactly the dates of the Jewish calendar. Erev Pesach, you know, one day, after I had been there for a year, Katz's policeman's wife had died. Katz didn't look after me after that very much. I still used to get a scrap from him occasionally, but I was on my own. And I was getting thinner. My clothes were getting dirtier. I used to walk around. I had lost the shoes that I came from. It was a year now. That I came because I came in August, and this was August 44. I, my shoes were finished, so we used to walk around with the cement bags. We used to tear up the cement bags or, 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 or bags that, that used to come with chemicals. We used to tie our, our, our feet with, with pieces of, 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 of uh, wire, and we used to walk in that in winter. Poland in winter is not a joke, I can tell you. It's colder than Toronto. <laughs> 